Hi everyone, Tim here from Smart Home Mastery. Today's video, I'm gonna give you a rundown of my AV rack here for my, that supports my nine to four home theater. Here's a little quick view of it. It's nine to four, but as you can see, I have two rows of surrounds. That's what you're seeing here and here. Front row for these seats and then back row for the island here. And then of course the backs. So let's do a quick shot around. Again, back row, front row, heat pump, my wides. And then we got the Atmos there. Atmos back here. So it's nine, two dot four. Got two subs behind the screen, but it's going to be 944 soon. Um, and like I said, I also have two rows, two rows of surrounds. So we actually have 15 channels plus the two subs. And I'll explain that a little more when we get over here. So here's my rack. As you can see, it's located to the right of my screen little room back here and there actually is a room behind there I have a video that I did I uh, showed how I made a door way out of this so this is actually my rack actually acts as a door and that little red switch on the wall right there that you can see opens and closes it so let's do a little tour here so to start off with we got the AC infinity cloud plate that is the cooling for this puppy right here, the brand new Marantz AV10, the 15.4 processor. We got another AC Infinity quad plate, and that is for the brand new Marantz amplifier, Amp10, 16 channels, 200 watts. We have power distribution, and that is for the subamps. Just one subamp right now. This is an iNuke 6000 DSP. It's set up in dual mono that feeds both of the subs behind the screen. And that is because um, the Marantz actually has, the AV10 actually has four independent sub outputs on it. So it can calibrate them all separately. So a little bit of the uh, Few other things here. I actually went with these four post shelves, knife point. So instead of just the two post shelves, like you'll see here, this thing at the bottom, the Sony at the bottom is my old AV receiver that's going to be coming out. It's, but you can see that's sitting on one of the two um, post shelves, and those are rated for about, I think it's like 30 or 50 pounds, I think it was, but these, uh, Marantz pieces are pretty heavy. They're not 50 pounds, but the amp is probably, I don't know, 35 pounds maybe. And the uh, AV10 isn't light either. So I just wanted the extra strength. So I went with the four post racks. And I'm gonna have links for all this stuff in the description below of everything I used. Cause I got some stuff in the back I wanna show you too. So again, um, let's start at the top real quick. We got two four port blanks up at the top. Got the bright light here turned on. Um, so this is where I'll be putting, if I get any more inputs, like a Blu-ray player or anything, that's where this those will go. Um, there's one shelf. And then you also notice this too. See these little pieces here? I actually got half U uh, blanks. And that's because the Marantz, both the eight amp and the AV10 are not quite they're, they're in between four and five rack units. So without that there, there's a pretty good gap. You can see there's still a little bit of a gap, but um, I wanted the airflow to work good there. So I closed it up a little more and just, and just to make it look better too, I closed it up a little more with those half U. They're expensive for what they are, but makes it look a little better, I think. 
So these AC Infinity fans actually have probes on them that you I just have sitting on top of the devices, so the AV10 and the Amp10. And so they have little thermostats in them, so you can actually have them come on only when the devices get warm, which they do get warm. Uh, that one, especially on the Amp, comes on when I, uh, when I have this turned on. They're kind of loud, but... I'm far enough away, my seating position is far enough away from here, it doesn't, like, it doesn't even bother me. But if these things were, if your rack's close to your main listening position, I would, uh, you might want to think about something else. All right, and then the last thing I guess I want to show you here before we get in the back is I just got a, uh, I got a shelf here with a drawer. Again, nav point. And uh, what I got this for is actually to show you. So I have my fire cube and a little network switch back there in there. So I was wondering if the fire cube was going to work um, being in there. Then my re the remote still works fine. So that's just to keep that completely hidden. So my fire cube and a little network switch is in there. So I have. Uh, I ran a network connection up to here, and then I just ran into that switch, and then the switch feeds the the AV10. So there's the front. Like I said, this is on a linear actuator, and so I just got to hit this switch and uh, open up the rack. And so uh, let me do that, and I'll see you in the back. Okay, here we are in the room behind the rack. A little tight back here, but this is where all of my wiring comes in. See these Smurf tube running from all of the columns where the speakers are to a trough. Let's see if I can get this here. This is all my lighting control from all my LEDs. Lighting control for all of my lighting zones. These are all insta on switches. And then I have a motion light right there. So when the rack opens, the light automatically comes on back here and it'll shut off. We got a smoke detector right up above the rack right there. Sorry about the light. You can see where the Smurf tube comes in through. Another trough up there for the line voltage wiring for the lighting. So this whole room is painted black. So let's this is what I mentioned. So you get the rubber on the floor. There's the track that the uh, rack runs in that pulls it back. I pulled the linear actuator out right now so that I can uh, move the rack back and forth easily since I was wiring everything. So let's check out this real quick. So we got it's the back of the AB10. These got all it's all XLR. So I got short three, like three foot XLR cables, wire tied up, not tight, just loose. Um, there's the back of the AV10. So we got there's the two subs. I mentioned that's gonna handle four subs. Here's all my channels, and then feeding into the amp10. Now this is quite hard to see. The XLR going in, and then all of these uh, are custom-made patch cables. I made all of them individually. I actually have all my wiring running into this patch panel here, into these banana jacks. You can see the wire right here. All of it goes up, goes into the trough, and out to all the speakers. So these are all uh, these are all labeled. I have a whole chart in here for this, like which which jack is for what speaker, and so I just made custom banana patch cables just so that this wasn't a big mess. I think it came out pretty good. Another trick I did, didn't use about three foot pat, uh, power cords just so that there wasn't a bunch of extra power cords back here on everything. The Amp 10, or the AV10, the Amp 10, and my iNuke, I'll have those short ones. There's actually three 20 amp circuits back here. So right now I have one 20 amp circuit. Let's see if I can get a shot of these. A bunch of them down here. So this one here, you can see a switch on the wall right here for my projector. Feeds this outlet. And right now that's just a 
this cable right here just loops around and goes back in. So that's the power for my projector right there that goes to the outlet out there. And then this is the plug feeding it. That's actually gonna, I'm gonna put that into a probably UPS just for power conditioning in case the power goes out. The projector can cool off. And there's the, the these are both on a 20 amp circuit. So we got one 20 amp circuit, two, three. So right now I have the amp 10 and the V10 on a 120 amp circuit. I have the uh, iNuke on another. And so you can see I got a power strip attached to the side of the rack here. So I have the amp meter on it. And so that makes it really easy so that all the power can, everything just stays on the rack. The only thing going off the rack is the one power, the two power cords for the two power distribution and then of course the speaker wire and one network and one network wire other than that the whole the route rack is all self-contained just there's the power for the AC so these there's the probe I was mentioning so you know it's just just a probe I just leave it sitting on top and there's one on down here on the amp 10 as well So here's the back of the cabinet, the back of the drawer. Actually has holes through it already, as you can see. It's hard to see, I know. But there's holes back here where the wiring comes out, so the HDMI cable and the network cables come out of there. That's it, so it's nothing too exciting, actually. It's a 9.2.4 theater, but because these Marantz handle everything, there's not a lot of components. You know, this one amp has, so this has 16 channels, and as you can see, I'm using 15. Got one, one channel for you there. And that, again, feeds the, um, all the floor channels and the height channels. And then the iNuke, uh, right there, two-channel iNuke, 6,000 DSP feeds the two subs. So that's it. That's a little tour of my home theater rack. Again, nothing too exciting. I know there's a lot of them with a lot more uh, stuff in them than what this one has. A lot more sexy than this one, but I think the iNu or the I'm sorry, the Marantz. These new Marantz devices just clean it right up. Everything's in those two boxes. You don't need a whole bunch of amps. And this thing, I got it calibrated, and I tell you what, it sounds beautiful so that'll be my next video probably is doing a review of these things just got them hooked up haven't had a whole lot of time to play with them but i did run through the odyssey quickly and just out of the box with the odyssey it sounds awesome so that's it if you have any questions about anything here like i said i'll put a link in the description with all the components that i used in case you have any questions or you want to do what i did um Till the next video.